Much like many of you, I've frequently questioned the skyrocketing costs of cable television and if there's any alternative that can match it. Good news! There is an alternative, and we'll explore it in today's episode of The Grumpy Sysadmin. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, and today we're delving into the world of streaming services and what it means to cut the cord from your conventional cable providers. Now, some of you might recall the era before cable television when you had a measly four or five channels to pick from. Yes, those were grim times. But as technology advanced and our appetite for endless cat videos grew, cable TV and the internet have expanded side by side. Nowadays, most households are plugged into this system, feasting on a wide array of media. The problem, however, is that while your monthly bills have soared, your viewing options, especially for watching what you want, when you want, have dwindled or even disappeared. Despite its rising cost, cable TV really hasn't improved in the terms of quality or quantity of entertainment offered. To make matters worse, major broadcast corporations like ABC, CBS, NBC, and others have not only scaled back their over-the-air programming, but they've also launched their own independent streaming services. Yes, you heard that right. Not only are you shelling out a hefty sum each month for cable, but now you can also have the privilege of paying extra for exclusive content available only on their streaming apps. I'm looking at you, Paramount Plus and Peacock and others. Recently, there's been an explosion of streaming apps offering free services and each promising access to just about any content you desire, only to be inundated with ads, making it feel like you're watching more commercials than actual television. Enter the world of free and subscription-based streaming. I made the switch from traditional cable over half a decade ago and haven't so much glanced over my shoulder. Scared of losing out on your precious scheduled TV? Don't be. You can still catch it all with any of the streaming platforms out there and with a smart TV or the addition of an inexpensive Roku, Fire Stick, or what have you other devices readily available. Now I get it. Many of you are used to your regularly scheduled TV programming. You've grown accustomed to tuning in every Thursday at 8 p.m. for your favorite show or catching that Sunday game at 4 p.m. and so on. The thought of switching to a streaming service might make you wonder, does this mean I'll actually have to choose what I'm going to watch now? Talk about your first world problems, right? Trust me, I've gone through the same dilemma myself. Thanks to the widespread availability of broadband internet, you're already halfway there to cutting the cord. You're no longer at the mercy of that lone, overpriced cable company in your area. With broadband, you have more than enough bandwidth to stream all the videos and reality TV your heart desires. And as internet options continue to diversify, hello, cable, DSL, fiber, 5G, and satellite, your streaming choices just keep getting better and better. Thinking of snipping the cable cord for good? Good on you! Here's a cheat sheet of what you'll need to transition into the 21st century. A broadband internet connection. Aim for at least 100 megabits of downstream bandwidth to handle your family's binge watching needs. Trust me, more bandwidth never hurt anyone. Ever heard anyone say, Gee, I wish I had less bandwidth. No, I didn't think so. Not sure how fast your connection is? Type speed test into your browser to find out. A solid Wi-Fi network. Make sure there's enough Wi-Fi juice wherever you're planning to place your streaming device or television. You might get by with a single Wi-Fi access point, but depending on your home size, layout, or that mystical materials inside your walls, you might need additional access points or a Wi-Fi mesh system. But let's save that headache for another video. A smart TV or a dumb TV with a smart friend. Whether it's a built-in smart TV or an old clunker with an HDMI port on it that you can plug a device into, you'll need something that can connect to your Wi-Fi. 
a Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, all competitively priced and user-friendly. Pick your poison. The device of your choice. Don't want to watch on a TV? Fine. Be a rebel. You can also stream content directly on a computer, phone, or tablet. Now onto the smorgasbord of streaming services available. Trust me, you've got options. Disney Plus, your one-stop shop for everything from Mickey Mouse to Darth Vader. Discovery Plus, perfect for those of you who can't live without your daily dose of How It's Made or Deadliest Catch. ESPN Plus, sports junkies, this one's your fix for all things athletic or just to watch people be athletic while you snack on the couch. Netflix, say goodbye to the days of scratch DVDs. Welcome to a world of endless shows, movies, and an alarming amount of true crime documentaries. Apple TV Plus, Apple's answer to, can we produce original content too? Spoiler alert, they can and they did. Amazon Prime, if you're already handing over your cash to Jeff Bezos for a free two-day shipping, you've got a library of movies and shows included for free of extra charge, of course. So go ahead and pick your poison or poisons. We're not judging. And folks, that's just the tip of the streaming iceberg. If you're missing the good old days of channel surfing, there are cable-esque streaming services that'll give you a healthy dose of nostalgia. These options bundle multiple channels together, just like your traditional cable package. But be warned, they come with a heftier price tag compared to the individual services I mentioned earlier. Hulu. Starts at $7.99 a month. Want to dodge those ads, though? That'll be $14.99 a month. Yearn for live TV? Well, now cough up $69.99 a month. Sling TV. The orange and blue plans will each set you back 40 bucks, or get both in a bargain bundle for 55. Direct TV Stream. Price ranges from yikes at $74.99 to are you kidding me at $154.99. YouTube TV. One flat rate of $72.99 because why not? Fubo. Choose your level of wallet damage from $74.99 to $94.99. I can hear some of you moaning already. Great. I'm just swapping one money pit for another. Well, hold on to your wallets because there are actually free options. Yes, you heard me right. Free. Although, you'll have to tolerate some good old-fashioned ads. Many streaming devices even come with their own ad-supported channels. Take the Roku, for example. Buy the device and voila! You get the Roku channel filled with content you can watch without spending a dime, thanks to ads. And Roku isn't the lone ranger here. There are plenty of other ad-supported streaming services. Don't expect the latest Oscar winners or Emmy-nominated shows, but hey, it's a treasure trove of older TV shows and movies. Here's a quick list to get you started. The Roku Channel. Comes with the device at no extra charge. Pluto TV. Light cable, but free with fewer bells and whistles. Crackle. Yes, it still exists and it's still free. Popcorn Flicks. Because the world needed another flicks. YouTube. You already know this one. Just avoid the rabbit holes. IMDB TV, because even IMDB wanted to get in on the streaming act. Still not satisfied? A simple Google search or a scroll through your streaming platform's interface will unveil even more zero-cost options. So go forth and stream without breaking the bank. So, if like me, the grumpy sysadmin, you're tired of the dumpster fire that is cable television, cut the cord. The cost of cable TV is only where the Shakespearean tragedy begins. They lure you in with a price that seems almost reasonable, seduce you with the promise of extra channels and cool features, then BAM! 
Your monthly bill arrives, looking like the GDP of a small nation. And don't even get me started on the laundry list of fees. FCC fees, local government fees, state government fees. They've got a fee for every level of the bureaucracy. And if you thought you could escape the fee frenzy, think again. And the rental fee for each magical device that allows you to access the channels you're already overpaying for. Isn't that just the cutest little scam? It's like being charged rent for the air you breathe. Delightful. And don't forget customer service. I'd rather be audited by the IRS while having a root canal. You call for help and what do you get? An endless loop of not our problem and a rundown on how to unplug a cord like you're a toddler learning shapes, the absolute pinnacle of human achievement and uselessness. No wonder, just like yours truly, the grumpy sysadmin, people are fleeing to streaming services faster than rats off of a sinking ship. Because let's face it, streaming just cuts through the bureaucratic tape and the mind-boggling idiocy delivering you straight to the content you actually want to watch. Imagine that, a service that actually serves. What a revolutionary idea. All right, folks, you've survived another episode with The Grumpy Sysadmin, your one-stop shop for tech rants, how-tos, and everything that ticks off anyone who's ever had to deal with the mess that is modern technology. If you found my tirade on ditching your cable overlords for streaming even remotely enlightening, do me a favor, hit that like button. It won't solve your first world problems, but it'll give you a momentary sense of accomplishment. And for heaven's sake, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's free and only takes a second and really helps support the channel. And while you're at it, turn on notifications so you'll know the exact moment I've released another nugget of grumpy wisdom onto the internet. Remember, cutting the cord isn't just about saving money. Although, let's be real, who doesn't enjoy sticking it to the corporate giants? It's about reclaiming your freedom, your choices, and your sanity in a world increasingly devoid of all three. That's it for this episode. Leave your questions, comments, or things you'd like to see in future videos down in the comments. Until next time, my friends, stay grumpy.